Buenos dias. Hello, buenos dias. Como está usted? Que tal? What's been happening? Everybody good? I hope so. It's Friday. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to re not only rejoice, we're going to study part two, the message to the church in Sardis, found at the beginning of Revelation chapter three. We found out that this church had nothing doctrinally wrong in it. No false teaching we know about, but it was dead, dead, muerte. And the Lord says, you have a reputation of being alive, but you're dead. Wake up. Now, strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your deeds, I found them unfinished in the sight of God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. You know, Sardis was a city that at one time had a big name in the Roman Empire and in Greek history, and it was in what we call Turkey. And it's like a circuit, as I told you. Looking at the camera, it's like, if this is Ephesus, it's going like this, the next one, Smyrna, and around and down. But this city, when someone visited just a hundred, a couple hundred years ago, not only no Christian witness, it's like it has a silence. Someone wrote a darkness to it that could almost be felt like the plague in Egypt. And no Christian witness. That's something where the church began. There's hardly any Christian presence in Turkey. Very few Christians. So he tells them, wake up and strengthen what remains. In other words, you're not bankrupt yet. There's still something going on that's good. There's, there, there's some, something to work with. There's faith. There's hope. There's hung, some hunger for God, but it's just about dead. So before it dies, strengthen it. Come on, fan that flame. That's a good thing to apply not just to churches, but to our own lives. Is anything like ebbing away in your life? Like you used to read the word and really get a lot out of it. And now, eh, catch as catch can. I asked someone the other day, did you do devotions today? A younger person. And they said, yes, I read a verse this morning. Ugh. Well, a verse is better than no verse, but... Maybe God has something a little bit heavier, thicker, more, more comprehensive, more strengthening for us than one verse. So strengthen what remains because you, as a church, you haven't finished the course God has laid out to you. You're not done yet. You're not perfect. And then he goes on to say, remember, therefore, what you have received and heard and hold it fast. Today, there is a fascination always with something new, isn't there? New. New day. New thing. New teaching. New song. New this. And there are some new things that are good things because they're true things. But the old saying is true. If it's new, it's not true. And if it's true, it's not new because there's nothing new under the sun. So notice what he says for their recovery. Not there's a new revelation coming. I'm sending a preacher to you who's going to tell you the new teaching about the angel Gabriel and how many angels you can fit in an Airbnb. No. Remember what you were taught. To go ahead most times with God is to go back because Satan steals steals truth, steals sermons, steals songs, steals first love, steals that first consecration. So go back. Go back to correct doctrine about Jesus. 
Go, go back to your New Testament, read it, go back, and now you go ahead. But a lot of people, we live shallow and we're not renewed in our minds. So everything is just new, new teaching, new manifestation. Oh, how many new manifestations have I heard in the last 25 years? And then they stop. It's like God said, I'm only doing that for like 13, 14 months. Everyone's teeth is being filled. No, no more. No, angels are coming to the meetings. How do we know angels were there? They left their feathers. Why, you don't have feathers in the back of your church at the end of the service? Dude, what's up? There's a new manifestation. People are twitching now under the Spirit thing. One girl down in Florida years ago, I saw her on TV being interviewed. She had twitched periodically, spasmodically, for over, I think, 10 months. Hmm. Can I imagine Jesus doing that? Hmm. How about the Apostle Paul? I want to tell you something. Love is patient. I don't think so. But it's new. People raise money and cause sensations off of novelty. He says, go back to what you learned. Come on, what did you learn at the beginning? That's true. That's like the rock of ages. Otherwise, if you don't wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. And the, the threat there, let's call it what it is, Jesus is saying, you don't get this thing together. I'm going to come and, and judge you. Is it not remarkable? In the vibrant days of the early church, there's not one remaining blessed Christ-centered church in the area, the cities where these seven letters were written. Why? Because you don't have to be taught to backslide. Here's what I learned from my own life. You don't have to teach me to backslide. I'll backslide naturally. Just cut me off from the Word of God, Christian fellowship, spending time in prayer, hearing good preaching, be encouraged. You cut me off from that, I will backslide and draw a drift away from the Lord. So how is it with you today? Remember what you were taught. Come on, at the best moment of your life, what were you taught? Go back to that. Go back to Jesus. Remember when it was all simple? I hear some sermons now and I read books. You need four years of college just to serve God, just to figure out the book. Can't be. Except you become like a little child. You can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Go back to Jesus. Hold on to him today. He'll walk with you. He'll bless you. And he'll strengthen those things that remain in your life and mine. Amen. Amen.